Hi, I'm Bryce Crittenden. Hi, I'm Caroline Land, and welcome back to EPL's Overdue Fines. Caroline, uh, how's it going today? How are you? It, it is a hot one out there, Bryce. That is for it, sure. It, yeah, like when we're recording this uh, about a week before you're actually going to hear it, and um, it's it's we're just entering that like plus 35 kind of streak, so... Uh, when you're listening to this on hopefully July 2nd or later, I hope everybody's staying cool because we're just entering it now. So uh, we're probably going to feel a lot different about this weather in like a few days from now, Caroline. Yeah, I, I've i never really been a hot weather person. Um, I, mm. I I prefer the shoulder seasons. The That intense heat is just not for me. I like that the shoulder seasons. Yeah, um, I've never heard that term. Oh, before. <laughs> I say it. All, I say it all the time, and now I'm realizing uh, I may have made it up. We try to be trendsetters here on Overdue Finds. So, uh, before actually, Caroline, I get into really today's uh, topic and what we're talking about, I have to circle back to our last episode. Um, so, on our last episode, uh, I recommended the movie Rad, so the BMX bike movie. Caroline, you sent me a tweet and you told me that I undersold the the BMX dance scene. The dance scene. So yeah. I have to ask. I have to ask you, did you watch the movie? Like, did you watch the whole movie or did you just watch that dance scene? Haven't seen the movie yet. I did go and watch the dance scene. It is available as a clip on YouTube. I almost included a link to it in the item list for last week's, uh, for last time's episode, but I decided against it because I, I do think there is value in preserving the sanctity of having it in the context of the entire movie. But the clip that I watched, I was blown away. I don't know what I was expecting when you said BMX dancing. I was not prepared for this. You are, well, and we've touched on this a little bit before, like you're a really big uh, figure skating fan. I am, So I was like, I think Caroline will will appreciate this scene because there's definitely shades of uh, <laughs> Blades of Glory, if nothing, yeah. if no other movie, yeah. So that so that's enough rad talk for today. But I was I was glad that you were able to at least check out that BMX dance scene. And uh, yeah, yeah, if you haven't, uh, you know, we're still recommending you go check out the movie, the movie Rad. But um, yeah, today though, um, when you're hearing this, yesterday was Canada Day, and uh, you know we thought that this week on the show uh, we want to visit. You know, we don't talk about music a lot, Caroline and myself. Well, especially me. You know, we've joked. I've joked around that my taste in music is not that great. So we thought, like, hey, it's Canada Day. Let's chat about some of our favorite all-time Canadian music. And Caroline, I know you're excited for today's episode to be talking about this, right? I really am. And I want to say that my taste in music, I do think it's great, but I am just very focused. If uh, if I listen to you between 1997 and 2003, I still love you. But outside of that range, I'm maybe not as up to date as I could be. So that's kind of where I'm stuck in my musical education. Nice. Well, we've got a couple of guests joining us today, and uh, yeah, for I'm not. Sh- we've had a lot of first time guests recently on Over Finds, and I love. We have such amazing staff here at EPL, and I love introducing you know all these like experts that we have uh, to our listeners. So first, I want to welcome uh, Josh Carr to the show. Josh, Hello. Uh, how are you? Well- <laughs> Welcome to Overdue Finds. We did a call out for staff, and you were one of the first people to raise your hand. You're like, I need to be on this uh, Canadian music episode. So, uh, obviously, you're a huge fan of Canadian music, right? Absolutely. I love Canadian music. Um, often I go down to Calgary and I visit the uh, National Canadian Music Museum, the Studio Bell. Um, I've done two visits in the past two years, and if you're big into Canadian music, I highly recommend going down. They actually have the Avril Lavigne girlfriend outfit on display, and that Whoa. is probably one of the coolest things, <laughs> among many other things there. So I recommend <laughs> making the trip down when when we're all comfortable doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Josh, uh, can you let everybody know what you do at EPL? 
So I'm a library assistant. Um, I'm out of the Capilano branch. Um, and right now I'm actually helping out with uh, the summer starts at EPL. Um, and if you come to Capilano, you'll often see me on the floor helping out patrons and making everybody feel so welcome and wonderful here. We're really excited to have you on the show uh, with us today. Also joining us for the very first time is uh, Quincy Hiscott. Uh, Quincy, you uh, you actually are really, not to say that you know us other three <laughs> aren't, but like really you are technically like a music expert, right? Can you, because you have a really interesting job here at EPL. Can you share with everyone what that is? Sure. Well, thank, first of all, I'll say thanks, Bryce. So happy to be joining you. I am indeed a first time guest, but a long time listener and an overall podcast fan. So <laughs> excited to be behind the scenes. Uh, my title here at EPL is somewhat misleading. I always have, to, there's no elevator pitch. <laughs> uh, so I'm technically the collections assessment librarian here at EPL, but a, a large part of my job in addition to that is to select material for the adult music and movies collection here at EPL. So it is a little surprising that I've never been on overdue fines. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like a little bit, of a little bit of a shot there, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> this will be the but, first, I'm sure, of many appearances mm -hmm. by you. I would hope so. Uh, but yeah. this, this uh, episode in particular, I was interested in not just because I, not only do I select music here, uh, but I am a musician myself. Before I ventured into library land, I did a Bachelor of Music at Dalhousie University, uh, specializing in saxophone performance. And look at me now, mom, look what I did with that degree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, as part of that, I, I spent most of my teenage years and my early 20s making a living from being a musician. Uh, so I guess I am a Canadian musician myself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do have, have anything in the collection here, though. <laughs> no, I was going to say, do you have an album or anything? <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't think so, unless there's like an old Nova Scotia tattoo live recording. <laughs> I'm in the band. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> uh, from way back in the day. <laughs> and Quincy, you are a former uh, intern librarian. Uh, oh, and yes. I uh, also was one. So I always like uh, pointing out others in the, the intern club at EPL. Yes, I guess I am part of the elite intern club. <laughs> Not elite. <laughs> it's kind of elite. It's kind of elite. I really snuck in there because I actually did the first half of my degree at McGill and then I finished at the U of A. So I kind of like just yeah. got in to be able to apply for the internships here. <laughs> of course, we are talking about some of the best of Canadian music today. Caroline, I've got a question for you. Okay. Why should kids get to have all the fun with their own summer reading club? I don't know. That is a very good question, Bryce. Why should they get to have all the fun? Well, good news, because there's now a summer reading club for adults. So from June 26th to August 28th, both adults and teens can sign up for Summer Reads 21. Keep track of your reading hours this summer and complete some fun activities to win some great prizes, including a Nintendo Switch Lite and a book signed by Neil Gaiman. To learn more, please visit epl.ca slash summer dash reads. Uh, summer Reads 21 is brought to you by the friends of EPL. Uh, Caroline, um, are you excited as I am to sign up for this? We should keep track of our reading hours and see how many activities we complete. Absolutely. I think that in the past, one of the activities has been to listen to an episode of Overdue Finds. Is that one of them for this year as well? It still is. So yeah, if you're listening yeah. to this episode you're already right ahead. now. You're streets ahead. You're done. You're well, almost done. You've got one activity <laughs> yeah. done. You still have to read for a few more hours and complete yeah. one other activity, but still. And if you're looking for something to read, we have the episode that came out last time on all of our recommendations. So check that out and uh, you'll be perfectly set up for Summer Reads 21. Yes. So let's get into our uh, recent overdue finds picks. Uh, Quincy, let's start with you. Uh, what's something that you've been enjoying lately? My overdue find is Lovecraft Country, which is a new HBO series developed by Bisha Green and based on the novel of the same name by Matt Ruff. 
and it's got magic. There's some social commentary on the Black experience in 1950s America and beyond. There's romance. There is a killer soundtrack. And all, all around, it's just a wonderful addition to science fiction told on the screen. Um, both my, me and my husband were obsessed with it. And both season one and the novel are in our collection here at EPL. So you should be sure to check them out today. It's great. Nice. Uh, that's a show that, um, yeah, I think it just came out like late last year, I want to say, or maybe early this yeah, year. Fall 2020. I know yeah. because we start getting customer suggestions immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's like episode like, yeah, one. We'll yeah. <laughs> just wait until the DVD is released. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give us a little bit more time, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one I remember seeing the ad for when it first came out. And it looked really cool. And I just have not gotten around to watching it. But but uh, yeah, nice, nice recommend, nice recommendation there. Uh, Josh, how about you? What's uh, something you've enjoyed recently? Well, I've been enjoying this on and off for the past few months because I've been kind of trapped inside and I wanna, I wanna stack things. So I've been playing a lot of Tetris. <laughs> Um, right now I'm playing the free Nintendo Switch game with Nintendo Switch Online at Tetris 99, which is Tetris, but a battle royale. So you're fighting other Tetris players and trying to knock them out. But I also enjoy, and we have these at the library, Tetris Effect on the PS4, as well as uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 and 2. And those are on multiple consoles. So I recommend that if you really just want to have a little bit more control <laughs> that we've been losing, I recommend playing some Tetris. Yeah, Tetris is a game that you can always go back to and just pick up and play whenever. It's funny because there's almost like two different categories of games. There is like the big campaign games like, you know, like your Skyrim or maybe your Red Dead Redemption. You sit down and you get like immersed in this other universe and, you know, hours just fly by. Uh, whereas sometimes you just kind of want to turn the brain off and pick up a game like Tetris and just sit there and sit there and play it. I unfortunately I don't have a Nintendo uh, Switch, so I haven't played uh, Tetris 99. I've heard amazing things about it, and yeah, I, the idea of getting to play Tetris against uh, people online sounds really fun. It's so much fun. I'm just waiting for the open world Tetris game. Once that happens, I <laughs> will be set. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good reminder that uh, EPL does carry uh, games for the Nintendo Switch. So if you're interested, maybe you've just got one and you're wanting to see what else is out there. Take a look in our catalog or as staff at the library and we can match you up with some Switch games. Um, Caroline, uh, what's something you've been enjoying lately? I recently read uh, a book called Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade uh, and Bryce and Quincy and Josh, I'm telling you all, I inhaled this book. I devoured it. It was so good. It was perfect. I did question if it's a book other people will enjoy because it seems like it's so specifically written exactly for me, but I think other people will enjoy it. So here's my pitch for the, for the book. Game of Thrones plus Notting Hill, plus the episode of The Simpsons where Selma dates Troy McClure, <laughs> sprinkled with some fan fiction. You put that in a blender, mix it all up, and you've got spoiler alert. Oh, uh, wow. Um, right? I don't even I don't even know what to say to that. Uh, it's When you mention spoiler alert, Quincy, your face totally lit up and you put the thumbs yeah. up. Uh, have you read it as well? It's on my to to read list, but I've heard like it's so funny, Caroline, that like I've actually heard a very similar recommendation from another librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Fan fiction was in there. Yeah. There was no Simpsons reference. That was a bit of a deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is because yeah. it starts out like part of the plot is uh, that April, who is the main female character in the book, uh, she is active in the fandom for this a uh, Greek myth show that has uh, characters. One guy, uh, Marcus, plays Aeneas, and she's active. She writes fan fiction. She does cosplay, but she's never really shared that side of her life online. And one of the reasons is that she is uh, 
larger than the actress who plays uh, the female characters on the show. And so she uh, posts a picture. She decides she's going to do it of herself in costume, gets a whole bunch of terrible like troll responses of she's too fat and ugly and all of these things. And then the actor, Marcus, comes to her on Twitter and is like, I think you're gorgeous. Next time you're in California, let's go out on a date. So they do. And so that's kind of the the Troy McClure part of like, there's this like date that sparks a bit more. Um, But when he's on the date, she confesses to him that actually she also writes fan fiction under this name. And he realizes that she is his best friend in the fandom world because he secretly writes fan fiction about the very show that he is on. He's never told anyone because it would jeopardize his job and his career. So now he has this secret. There are these identity pieces, uh, just a whole bunch of uh, really great fan fiction tropes going through the whole thing of secret identity, uh, fame, fortune, all these things. So really great. Highly recommend. Uh, yeah, it's it sounds absolutely amazing. Sounds like a, a great book. It sounds like it's probably very funny as well. Is that a fair assessment? Very funny. And uh, both of the both uh, Marcus and April are working through different things that they've experienced or had to overcome in their life. But they're, it's it's a really supportive environment that they develop for each other. Very funny. Uh, looking at the elements of fandom as well well and uh breaking apart something you love like she watches the show because she she loves it even when she's being critical of it because she kind of wants it to be better and so lots of fun there the um chapters are interspersed with different things like um message boards uh fan fiction examples uh scripts that marcus did early in his career that are perhaps not as great so it's a very very funny uh very touching book that i really enjoyed spoiler alert by olivia dade sounds sounds great and sounds like a great uh summer read as well um my pick this week um sometimes i'm sure we've all been there sometimes like just a title of a book or maybe the book cover just catches you and you're like i gotta i have to read this thing so mine this week i was uh looking through some graphic novels and uh the graphic novel by the name of southern bastards uh stood out to me of course the title naturally caught my attention me being the 10 year old that i am uh and so i was like whoa <laughs> so once you stopped like laughing <laughs> yes so i stopped laughing and being like oh my god like whoa they used the word bastards in this title then i was like let's let's read this book so yeah it just it caught my attention and basically the story starts off uh with a man named earl tubb he decides to come back back to his hometown of crow county alabama after his father dies he ends up running into some shady characters who might have had something to do with his death so i just read the first uh collection of it uh we've got i think it's like four or five different volumes of the graphic novel uh series in our collection both uh physically and uh on hoopla as well um it's funny because i was reading a little bit of history into it and the writer uh jason aaron and uh the artist jason uh, latour uh they're both from the southern u.s so jason's from alabama and jason uh both (laughs) jason aaron is from alabama and uh, jason latour is from north carolina and basically they wrote this as kind of like a love letter slash hate rant to the south uh so they decided to kind of create this southern focused uh series the series itself has a lot of acclaim behind it um it started in 2014 and it's actually won two major comic book awards uh the first was in 2015 uh they won the harvey award for best new series and in 2016 uh they won the eisner award for best continuing uh series so there's no superheroes in this one so if you're looking for something that's a little bit gritty and um the artwork's great in it uh, it's great kind of a uh, real kind of crime story uh southern bastards is is a really fun read 
All right. So today we're chatting about Canadian music. I'm excited to get everybody's picks here. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, Josh, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what are you, what are some of your earliest memories of uh, Canadian uh, music? And do you think the broadcasting laws around Canadian content or CanCon was a factor in maybe what you listened to? So I actually did a little bit of research on CanCon because I wanted to come in here with a little bit of knowledge. And currently for radio, the CanCon the, mm, the can -con laws, um, it's 35% of popular music that they broadcast each week has to be Canadian made. And I remember some of my earliest memories were actually of much music when I was up at 6.30 getting ready for school. And at 7, they played the French um, hour of much music. And I can't tell you how much I just loved listening for one year, for a whole year while I was going to school, um, getting up for 7 a.m., just listening to the French music that I was playing on much music. I unfortunately can't remember any of the names. Um, the only song that sticks in my head is the song called I Hate You, which has the England <laughs> English title. But I just loved listening to it because I didn't understand any of the words but the melodies and the sounds that came from it were just so fantastic to listen to. And I know that a lot of my early artists like Avril Lavigne, Metric, uh, Biff Naked, all probably came from the CanCon laws um, that were in play. Were those kind of uh, Avril Lavigne, Metric, were those some of like the first Canadian artists you really kind of recognized or was there some other ones? I would say like Avril Lavigne was probably the first one that I recognized, um, along with Fifi Dobson, who was popular at the time. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, as well, I also remember uh, Sarah Sleen, which is kind of a, a little bit of a deep cut. Um, she was mostly known for um, oh, she had a really she had a really good hit song that I can't remember the name of, but um, it was I know that those early two thousands um, they had some really great um, hard rock songs as well as like darker pop in canada which was which was really interesting compared to stuff that was coming out of um america at the time too because you had some of that those pop artists and things like that like the britney spears and christina aguilera's and we more had like kind of pop rock coming from canada i think uh quincy how about you i'm really interested to see what you know you grew up playing saxophone so obviously music was a huge influence for you growing up like what were who were some of the artists that uh, really uh, caught your attention at first well this goes way back um so i'm from the maritimes i don't know if I, my accent's gotten a little a little lost uh, but it'll probably come out as i start talking about this um but there was a lot of rank in family there's a lot of ann murray rita mcneil stan rogers and of course great big c I grew up in the 90s and 2000s, so you can't escape Great Big C if you were from <laughs> Atlantic Canada <laughs> during those eras. Or Ontario. Uh, oh, I didn't know they made it that far at that time. That's oh, great. Yeah. They're awesome. We, I still love them. We have a lot them. of Great Big C <laughs> fans like out here. And like I grew up in Alberta. And uh, yeah, I mean, I remember their music was really big out here as well. So Well, there's yeah. a ton of maritime transplants out here and Atlantic mm. Canada transplants. Like... I was shocked. I met someone who was from Fort Mac and they sounded like a Newfoundlander, but they were born here. And I was, <laughs> I was, and I was like, oh, well, that makes so much sense because that's where everyone has to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I was also a choir kid in uh, addition to saxophone. And so I've sung more renditions of Eyes the Bye and She's Like the Swallow, which for those not in the know are classic uh, Atlantic Canadian folk songs. Uh, so I've sung so many versions of that, more than you could imagine. <laughs> um, and I was also the perfect age growing up, kind of when I started having some more agency in what the car stereo was dialed to. <laughs> and I really reveled in like Joel Plaskett, Emergency, uh, David Miles, Rose Cousins, Luke Doucette, Matt Mays. I have so many here. I have to mention them all. Jen Grant. <laughs> And hey, Rosetta. <laughs> uh, there's just, and there's so many other amazing, kind of more contemporary artists, I would say, uh, from that part of the country. Um, but also, I know that the the CBC and just the overall CanCon broadcasting laws really influence that. Um, now, you know, looking back now, you're like, oh yeah, those artists were on all the time, and that's probably why. But they're great, so I didn't uh, <laughs> I didn't complain. 
And <laughs> CBC in general has influenced my musical taste a lot. Um, Tom Power's Deep Roots was one of the first things that I was like, I'm going to be cool and I'm going to listen to this <laughs> intentionally. <laughs> uh, uh, so they they had a huge impact on what I consider my musical upbringing. Uh, Caroline, how about you? Um, I like you said at the top of the show, pretty much anything from like ninety seven to two thousand three, like that's your wheelhouse. Like, yeah, that's the that's, music you love. So, was that kind of like your first early impressions of Canadian music? When we've talked about music in the past, and Quincy, you mentioned it here. Uh, when you're younger, you're often just kind of taking in what's around you, whether that's uh, your parents or just the TV or the radio. You're not actively choosing a lot of it. And I think that you know my very earliest, earliest stuff um, when I when we talked about Canadian television, things like Sharon Lewis and Bram. Uh, Fred Penner, like these were Mr. Dress Up, like there was the the Canadian television that was also musical had had that element to it. Uh, so they were definitely part of the soundtrack of my my earliest years. And then um, I grew up in a place that didn't at the time we did not have a lot of radio stations and the ones that we did have were like easy rock and so that's where you learn the songs that you don't even realize you know them until you just they're they're like imprinted on you like does anyone set out to listen to don't forget me when i'm gone by glass tiger i don't <laughs> like no but you know it and so yes. like that like i was reading through the lover boy wikipedia page because i was thinking of like working for the weekend right and then like you're reading their other songs and it's like there is so much here that has just washed over me. And so I definitely think the, the CanCon laws, you know, are my school bus. When I went to high school, every day we would listen to the, the Sudbury Easy Rock station and they had to play a certain percentage of Canadian music. And so you're, you're just kind of taking it in as you go. Edging into that 97 to 2003, um, I went, I, uh, so for a few years, I went to a, a summer school camp in Quebec that had weekly dances, Brian Adams slow dances, like his ballads were like at their peak tween effectiveness at that stage so and they would just like play the same stuff every week so like that is is my experience um kind of there i have a question for you caroline actually so i'm very curious as to like how music affects people in their lives and you already talked about how there is just so much we absorb subconsciously I mean, the colloquial term is kind of Muzak, but, and there's kind of a negative connotation with that, but really Muzak can be kind of anything. So that's just anything mm -hmm. that's in the background that you're not necessarily actively listening. It's more to create an atmosphere. So I'm curious, like this 97 to 2003 era, like what time in your life was that? I mean, maybe you don't want to, <laughs> like, yeah. to tell me, but if you're comfortable. It's, uh, it's, it's, Basically, uh, so I went to a K to eight school. I know that that is a little bit different. Most uh, schools, at least in Edmonton, have a junior high set up. So the it's it's the tail end of that, like being grade seven, grade eight, flipping to high school, and then starting university. That's that period of my life. That's that's so interesting. I feel like I need to do a study on this because I have this hypothesis that uh, the music that you're stuck on or like the music that you're really into and the genres and artists that you're attracted to are from those eras. And part of it, I think, is because there's so many um, important and often pretty happy memories that are being formed at that time. Um, yeah. So I'm just thinking like for me, a lot of these artists, are, it's like when I started going to folk fests or, you know, even as I got older, like going to the bars with friends and like who was playing on the, the live mic. And those are just happy times and good memories. Uh, obviously not everyone has happy times associated with yeah. their teenage years, <laughs> but yeah. they're, I think like as you get older, you realize how relatively easy and happy those times were. 
and I think that the act of choice, the the realization mm -hmm. of uh, when it when it comes on, am I listening to this because it's on, or am I listening to this because I choose to listen to this? And uh, you know that that ninety seven to early two thousands period, you were still having to go out to acquire media and music. Um, once you hit the later 2000s, you, you can start with the downloading and the file sharing becomes less of a virus risk. Uh, but all of that starts to, to come in and it's easier to just kind of like sit and explore versus going through and like flipping through CD racks of um, discovering the music out there. Bryce, what about you? What what sticks out in your Canadian musical journey? Um, but yeah, you know, growing up though, um, I'm older than everybody here on on the podcast. But like, pretty much, I don't I don't think CanCon really influenced what I listened to. Like, it was pretty much like whatever my parents had on, like the radio or were listening to in the car. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of adult contemporary music. So obviously these aren't Canadian artists, but like I grew up, I remember listening to a lot of like Fleetwood Mac and Phil Collins. Um, but, you know, from listening to the radio though is where, you know, I first heard of like Brian Adams was, you know, a really big one. And of course I didn't probably know at the time as a kid that he was Canadian until I got older. But then like, once you hear about that, these popular artists are Canadian, like somebody like Brian Adams was having all these huge hits in the early night, late eighties and early nineties, Caroline, what you mentioned with like, you know, dances and everything. Like, I don't think there was a single junior high dance that I went to where the final song wasn't everything I do, I do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just like staple, like this is the final, final dance. But um, yeah, you know, a lot of stuff too. I remember also hearing on the radio, it'd be stuff like Anne Murray, uh, the Guess Who, BTO and and Rush as well. So um, interesting, Quincy, you had that hypothesis about like, you know, kind of some of your favorite music is from a certain era, certain era in your life. It's funny because like, as I've gotten older, I've kind of started to like go to switch to more music that I know for a fact was actually released before I was born. So I don't know if that probably throws a monkey wrench in your hypothesis, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but I do have fond memories though of, uh, I do love music from the eighties and nineties when I was, when I was growing up. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're also pretty lucky to, be in an era where we can look back at music. Um, Bryce, you meant you had a reference to not necessarily knowing the name of the song or the artist, but just kind of what it sounded like on the radio. And a lot of it was more ephemeral. And if you didn't kind of have it and capture it in a format that you could play, it was gone. And now I can Google the best-selling Canadian music of all time and listen to pretty much all of it with a bit of searching or with a trip to the library. And this, the ability to look back at music and listen from multiple eras is, I think, an interesting thing that we didn't have at other parts of our life. So I know that this is a super broad question, but I'm just going to ask, what are some of your all-time favorite Canadian musicians, artists, or songs? Josh, let, we'll start with you. Some other artists I like, um, Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> I'm that kind of person. Um, I like Metric, um, Avril Lavigne, uh, Fifi Dobson, Biff Naked, that sort of thing. Um, I like that Lover Boy song uh, <laughs> that we talked about. That one... Um, that one woke a memory in me. Um, I used to play um, um, a Grand Theft Auto knockoff called Saints Row 2, and that was one of the songs that was in it, and I just played it on repeat all the time while I was driving around. Working was, for the weekend? Yes, working for the weekend. It was in yeah. there. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was so cool. Apparently, Saints Row radio stations uh, abide by CanCon laws. I didn't know that. That's fascinating <laughs> to me. <laughs> uh, like, every time I think about Canadian music, like something awakens in me that I didn't realize was Canadian or that I kind of had forgotten was um, Canadian. Like, um, like Rhea May, um, 
recently I listened to her um, and I was listening to her along with a non-Canadian artist, uh, First Aid Kit. And I thought First Aid Kit was Canadian and Rhea May was not. And I don't know why, because they, they were both on CBC. They played back to back. I was like listening to First Aid Kit and I was like, oh, this is Canadian. And then Rhea May is like, this, for whatever reason, this didn't feel Canadian. But then I looked it up and it was the opposite. Um, but I, I love Rhea May. I've been listening, I've been kind of binging her constantly on and off for the past little while. Um, Sarah McLaughlin, Alanis Morissette. I, I kind of keep like a wide variety of artists. Um, my biggest influence was the Juno 2004 uh, nominees album. Uh, it had things like Nickelback, Nelly Furtado. Nelly Furtado is another big one. I have mm -hmm. to mention Nelly Furtado. If I don't mention her at least once a week, I'm... I feel, I feel a little uneasy. <laughs> I'm trying to make one of these years Nelly Furtado's year where like she's in the top again just by me mentioning her. But it had like Buck 52, um, things like that. Sam Roberts, I think, is on that. Sam, I think I Sam, even have that CD. Uh, the Sam Roberts uh, band. Like the album is just like a great progression of like great songs. Like you have the the someday by Nickelback that goes into Powerless by Nelly Furtado, and it just keeps going down. Billy Talent is in there, and Try Honesty is probably one of my favorite Billy Talent songs, <laughs> based on everything else I've mentioned. Like I I bounce back and forth a lot with uh, music. Like I I kind of have never stuck in one genre. I'm willing to listen to anything. Um, once they come out with a Canadian K-pop band, I'll be set. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it. I think it's coming. I think it's, it's coming. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely coming. And when it does, I'll be the first one to listen to it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned lights, but um, I have to because um, when I was in concert, um, I went up to the stage and she touched my hand. Um, and it is something I will never forget. And I tell everybody that because it makes me so happy. Um, because I was listening to her before, um, even before her first album came out and I've just been listening to her ever since. So yeah, I just, I'm just willing to try anything at least once, uh, when it comes to any kind of artist. Carly Rae Jepsen, I have to say, I, I love to tease my sister because she and I went, I call her a Carly Rae Jepsen hipster because she is always like, I was into her before anyone else was. And we went, uh, we were at actually a figure skating event in uh, Quebec City where she was living at the time and they were playing her in the arena between uh, events. And my sister was just like losing her mind. She was just like, oh my God, I love this song. This is my jam, all of this stuff. And I was like, whatever, you know, no one's paying attention. It's like, whatever. Like six months later, she's the biggest thing in the world. And my sister's like, see, I told you. <laughs> so now like I, I've turned that into like my sister basically discovered Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> and that's how I feel about lights is because like I said, I was looking to her before she was popular and now it's like, I I discovered lights. You just don't you just don't know that I've turned everybody on to lights. But for me, my Carly Rae Jepsen is always the emotion and dedicated albums. Um, I wasn't really um, the um, the I think it's Kiss and Tell. Um, I did get kind of turned onto her by um, Call Me Maybe, but I was not into her until um, Emotion came out, and I really like you started playing, and then I've been sold ever since. Quincy, how about you? What are some of your your faves? Well, all I gotta say is oof. <laughs> uh, there are just, I, I've said it several times, but I'll say it again. There are so many incredible Canadian artists and I have a pretty broad musical taste. Uh, I'll say the one thing my music degree did for me was removing a lot of bias. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I don't listen to that. <laughs> um, but it's hard to say. So I'm just going to go with kind of what I find myself listening to a lot. I kind of went back through my Spotify history. I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I really like these uh, like these artists. Um, most of them are from Eastern Canada. So I, I do hope that others have most other Central, Quebec, and West Coast artists to represent. Um, I I wouldn't be... So I'm, I'm from a town called Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, which is across the harbor from Halifax. So I always tell people I'm from Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> the only Nova Scotia town anybody knows. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't be a good, and now there's a debate if it's Dartmouthite or D Dartmouthian. 
I'm going to say, I wouldn't be from Dartmouth uh, if I didn't rep Joel Plaskett. He's our hometown hero. And he, he has an album called Three. I'm not sure if anyone's heard it. It came out around 2008, I'm pretty sure. Maybe earlier. But that is the quintessential road trip album for any any Canadian millennial, I'm going to say. I will fight you on this. <laughs> this is the hill I will die on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but also uh, a similar artist, Jen Grant, she has an album called uh, Compos- Compostella, which I could I could listen to any moment of any day and from front to back and just enjoy so much. And of course, anything by David Miles. Uh, he has a great CKUA spot called Miles from Home. I think it's Mondays at noon. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to, to, to re- <laughs> What a great name that. for a show, by the way. <laughs> I know. He's fantastic. Uh, he's he's from New Brunswick, unfortunately, but I can forgive him that. He's great. <laughs> um, yeah, so all those artists are pretty near and dear to my heart. I could listen to them at any point. Um, particular songs, I'm going to say one of my all-time favorites. It's a song called Big Group Breakfast by... This man named Old Man Ludica, he's not old, but his name, his artist name is Old Man Ludica. And he's a banjo player and a yodeler. And that probably, a lot of people that would turn them off, but I'm going to say you should probably give him a try. Uh, He's really cool. And as you can probably tell, I really like folk, um, (laughs) but I also really like songs that everyone can sing together, like around the kitchen or around a campfire. And, you know, you can you don't have to play any instrument that well. <laughs> you can just kind of strum along and go. And yeah, th- those things are are, all, are pretty cool to me. I also return to, oh, so I am a saxophone player. So I do also <laughs> listen to quite a bit of jazz. <laughs> uh, so I also return to Rob McConnell and the Boss Brass albums quite a bit. So Rob McConnell is a Toronto-based musician. All of his groups, uh, they're mostly Canadian uh, players, m- most from kind of Ontario, Toronto. Basically the kind of top musicians in Toronto are, are on all those bands and they're fantastic. <laughs> so if you want to listen to some Canadian jazz, I highly recommend getting started with Rob McConnell. And of course, what kind of Canadian millennial would I be if I didn't mention the tragically hip and bare naked ladies? I mean, who who doesn't, who can't sing at least three of their songs? most like of the lyrics <laughs> who grew up any time between uh you know the 90s and 2000s um i had almost uh i don't want to say it was like a little panic attack or at, at all but like i had in my notes that there was like certain artists that i was like in my notes here today where i was like we have to make sure that they're mentioned <laughs> and uh, Tragically Hip was one of them because uh, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Tragically Hip fan in the <gasps> world. I I respect their music and I think it's awesome that Canadians love them. I'm just personally not the biggest hip fan, but I was like in my notes, I was like, okay, we, even though I'm not the not the biggest fan, we need to make sure that we mention them at some point in this episode. So uh, everybody has to show some respect to uh, the Tragically Hip. I go back and forth. It's definitely top three. Might even be number one. Tragically Hip song, Bob Cajun. I saw the Tragically Hip on their farewell tour at, uh, it was at, at Northlands. We weren't at Roger's place yet. So it was at Northlands and they didn't play it, didn't play it. And, but you know, you, you, sometimes you go into a concert and you have like your, your list of songs of like, I hope they played this. I hope they played that of this. So it was getting to the end of the concert and I had made peace with not, you know, it's okay. You know, I've heard a lot of great songs tonight. It's okay. If I don't hear this in like the second encore at the end, they play it burst into tears i'm like oh no i needed to hear this so i had that moment with them personally nice me and <laughs> thousands of other people in northland but you were probably cheering the loudest though um <laughs> through my sobs yes. <laughs> yes yeah it was definitely the most involved kind of yeah. piece on there uh so are there are there other uh, ones bryce that um, are either on your list of favorites or ones that you think we should mention? As far as my favorites go, uh, 
a couple obviously we've talked about brian adams before he's such a canadian icon a couple of bands though they're a little bit older of course uh the guess who who kind of got their start in the late 60s uh that's a band that you know maybe if you're younger you've never maybe like you know the name but you might not be able to recognize any of their song like you might not be able to name any of their songs but they're a band where it's like once you hear their songs, you're like, oh, yes, okay, I know who these guys are. So probably the biggest ones are like These Eyes, American Woman. Uh, one of my personal favorites is Running Back to Saskatoon and No Time. So those are probably like like four of their biggest hits that, um, yeah, most people have probably heard. And uh, that's a band, too, where I think when I discovered that they were Canadian, I was like, oh, my God, these these guys are awesome. Uh, lead singer, of course, is Burton Cummings, who also had a pretty solid uh, solo career as well in the late 70s, early 80s. You can go check out some of his albums. Um, another favorite of mine that uh, was pretty big, actually, in the late 90s, early 2000s is Big Sugar. And uh, the reason why I was I was a big fan of Big Sugar and still am, uh, their lead singer, uh, Gordy Johnson, uh, is actually from Medicine Hat, where I was born and grew up. So uh, probably one of their biggest hits was uh, Dig in a Hole, which came out in the late uh, 90s. And a song which is actually about Medicine Hat, uh, it's called... Um, all hell for a basement so uh rudyard uh kipling had a he had visited medicine hat at some point and medicine hat is known for its huge natural gas reserves and talked about how because of all the natural gas it had all hell for a basement so there's that song as well so that's uh, one of my own personal favorites i can't wait for our medicine hat episode it's gonna be we so will hard. have a medicine hat episode it's, there's just so much to talk about <laughs> there is <laughs> Caroline, how about Caroline? How about you? Um, who are some of your favorites? I love. And is their one names. of them? Sorry, just to cut you off. And is one of them Soul Decision? Yeah, it, it is on here. I have it on my list. Um, it's Soul Decision, and I'm pretty sure I said this uh, the last time I talked about Soul Decision, which is now like probably twice as many more than any other podcast. I honestly think that I've listened to their main CD, only CD, probably. No one does it better, uh, more than possibly any other person in the world, including the artists and their like families. Um, it was just one that we really took to in my family. It became what I call our Scrabble CD. We play it when we play Scrabble because it's the length of a game. Uh, but Faded was huge, you know, and I, I do think it was it, it was a song that benefited from the Canadian broadcasting and the content laws around having to play certain artists or songs in a block of time because it had that kind of pop um, element when pop was really popular. It has a rap interlude in it. It's just, I mean, if you haven't listened to Soul Decision in a while or ever, go check it out. And I do know that we have it uh, available in our collection and it will be linked in our item lists on there i think a lot of the others uh, uh bare naked ladies is a huge band that i love i think it's one that's kind of grown with me where it's kind of gone from just being that music that's there um both culturally as well as more locally my dad had a copy of uh, Gordon, one of their first CDs uh, that I have since stolen from him and now own as mine. Sorry, dad, I know you're listening. Um, that's where Gordon went. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, it was played like Million Dollars, Brian Wilson, like it was early stuff. But then over the years, I've just come to love it and really get into um, their music. Stunt holds up. Uh, not just because it's from that 97 to 2003 period. Uh, the music of it is, is really solid and they've continued to tour. And so I've been able to see them in concert a number of times, not in the last couple of years, but um, it's there's a familiarity with it that is ongoing. And I think that that's 
really comforting for me. Maybe that's what I want now. I want comfort from my music, maybe. I don't know, a little. Uh, then there was also that that period of the, the 90s, 2000s, where there were artists, many of them female, who transcended Canadian-ness, and they were like the biggest artists in the world. Shania Twain's music, like, uh, come on, is it Come On Over? Is, is like, the 20th best-selling CD of all time, any genre. Like, her music is insanely well-selling. Celine Dion with, uh, you know, she also, like, Brian Adams had movie soundtrack tie-ins, and then post-Titanic was just this other element. Um, Alanis and Jagged Little Pill. Like, I'm, I'm using one name, right? Like, uh, Celine, Shania, Alanis, like that's how big these artists got. Um, and so having those tie-ins, like they're all really good ones for, I think, just putting it on the music, cranking it loud and just belting it out. Yeah, it's like comfort food. Like yeah. just going back to that idea of comfort, comfort food, comfort music. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then um, I also another band I love is uh, uh, Stars and uh, songs like "Your Ex Lover Is Dead." There's a melancholy to it, so it's for that like the when I want comfort, but a kind of sad comfort. I think uh, that's definitely the the area I'm into. And Our Lady Peace is one I'm just oh, gonna yeah. throw out there for uh, we hit that. Re- uh, reference today <laughs> I, and i think most of us probably at some point owned well i know i did but i think most of us on here probably at some point owned a big shiny tune cd as well oh definitely oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and the, and it as a, as a cd like it had a, a percentage of canadian artists on it like it would have mm-hmm. the big american bestsellers but then especially as you got towards like the second half of the CD, there would be all of these Canadian bands and music sprinkled in. Big yeah. Shiny Tunes and Now. That yeah, it was Much Music Now. Is that what it was called? Yes. Yeah, I was I was trying to figure remember what the Much Music ones were called. I had a lot of those. And then there was also the Much Dance. Dance. Yeah. Much Oh yeah, Much That Dance. was my Much Dance. I always had some Much Dance in my collection. Yeah. yeah, it was the soundtrack to my first job, which was a paper route <laughs> up, a, up and down the two biggest hills in Dartmouth, which if you're from there, you know those are big. <laughs> Hopefully you got tipped good when you came around to. to it was collect. $11 a week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was from, they would, they would drop off the papers unrolled. I had to roll them, put them in bags, and then I used my brother's little red wagon. <laughs> tow them behind me and throw them on people's hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've talked on the podcast about how both Caroline and I tend to listen to more of the older stuff when it comes to music. Uh, so uh, Josh, what are what's some new stuff that people should be checking out? Uh, this one I discovered last night. It's an artist called Ralph and her hit song Gravity is one that I think everybody should. I think it's going to be a really good song of the summer. Um, in the past 10 years, we've really hit some really great artists. I would say two of the most perfect albums that have ever come out, and people may fight me on this, um, Little Machines by Lights and Art of Doubt by Metric both have such smooth and fantastic progression from the start to the end that there is no skippable songs. Um, an artist that I saw in concert um, when I saw Lights, when she touched my hand, I want to make sure I got that into the podcast again. Um, <laughs> Dear Rouge, um, Black to Gold, they started in 2012. And I think so key um, to listen to them because they're, they're a Vancouver-based band and they're still kind of um, getting out there. Um, but I saw them in concert and they are fantastic. I have a picture of me with the main singer um, and I treasure that picture forever. Um, and of course, the two Carly Rae Jepsen albums, uh, Dedicated and Dedicated Side B, along with Emotion and Emotion Side B. So I always find Side B is a little bit better than the regular, but the regular is always still fantastic. So I think those are some really great artists to keep in mind as we're heading into the 2020s. And I was doing some research and we're going to get a lot of good rap. I think 2020 is going to be the Canadian uh, decade for rap. Um, there were just too many artists to name. Um, 
so yeah, I definitely think we need to be keeping an eye out um, on the hip hop scene uh, going forward. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, one artist that we've, we haven't mentioned yet, and he's been like, he's like the top selling artist for like the last, I don't know how many years, but of course, Drake. Yes. Um, yeah, like just, it's, you know, amazing that, you know, he's a Toronto kid and um, yeah, he's got some of the best selling albums over the last few years. Well, what was really cool was uh, when America's uh, best dance crew was on television, um, maybe some people might remember it. Um, one of the seasons actually had a Drake week and it was doing the art, these artists like Nicki Minaj and Rihanna. And so to have a week dedicated to Canadian artists was fantastic. And it, produced some really great performances. Um, you can still find some of them on YouTube, so I recommend checking them out if you can. Uh, yeah, it was so cool. And of course, too, we just had The weekend who performed like halftime at the Super Bowl. Uh, I was trying to think of any other Canadians who might have done that, and I can't think of any. I'm not going to say there isn't one, but I can't think of them. Yeah. If there is no. one. Quincy, what are some uh, new artists that you think everybody should check out? Uh, well, I'm going to have to name drop some people that I actually know personally and went to music <laughs> school with. <laughs> what kind of what kind of Love young first musician would I be if I didn't do that? You gotta That's you right. gotta help your buddies out. Mm -hmm. uh, one artist I've got to mention. I mean, I don't know how you wouldn't have heard of him by now, but uh, Jeremy Dutcher. He's a fantastic Indigenous two spirit musician, uh, hailing from New Brunswick, but. I don't know where he's based out of now, but I mean, he's been everywhere. He's touring. He won a Polaris Prize in 2018. He won a Juno in 2019. He's got some fantastic stuff going on, um, you know, merging kind of traditional Indigenous music traditions uh, with, uh, he's also a classically trained opera singer. He's a tenor. <laughs> um, and then there's kind of this really cool, like, indie pop vibe with all his music, too. It's I've never heard, I don't think anyone has ever heard anything like it. And this is the stuff that really gets me excited um, in the music world, um, even just beyond like, you know, getting into the, the minutiae, you know, dissecting the different influences, but it's just interesting and new and fresh to listen to. Um, another great group uh, that I went to music school with are some of them, uh, they're called Hillsburn and they're an indie pop group from Halifax. And they've been around for a few years, but they're really starting to get some momentum. They've won a Canadian Folk Music Award. Uh, they've been nominated for many, many East Coast Music Awards. And they just released a new album, which is called Slipping Away. And I don't think the order's gone through yet, but it will come up soon. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, another fantastic East Coast group. They're not actually together anymore, but I still think you should listen to them. They're called Gypsophilia. Uh, I, I tried to describe it. I was trying to, I was writing this down and I was reorganizing this order, but I'm going to go with jazz, folk, klezmer, indie. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I think you should just give it a listen and uh, try to figure it out for yourself. It's a, they have a really unique sound. And I had to put in one West Coast artist because I felt like I was being biased. <laughs> uh, but a group I really enjoy and I, I, I go back to a lot and they're, they're still uh, active today is Said the Whale. Uh, mm. They're from Vancouver. They're, they've just got great stuff to so check them out. And uh, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention Capital City Records as well. So I was getting there, Bryce. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was just really excited for Capital City Records. I was. That was the other one, too. I was nervous. I was like, oh, my God, we, we must mention Capital City Records. But, Quincy, is there any artists out of Capital City Records that you, like, you think people should there's lots and of course these are all like local musicians if if you're not mm -hmm. familiar with capital city records but um any from there that really stand out to you yeah um i mean the, the i think the hugest one to me is nuella charles uh fantastic fantastic singer uh and she's she's one that i specifically made <laughs> name dropped um but there are so many like that i am gonna mention the riverside's album in the if we get to the next question. <laughs> um, but because all the artists on there are so fantastic and there's lots of great tracks, but oh, I don't want to, I don't want to bury my lead. <laughs> <All good. laughs> <Later>. <laughs> We've had uh, 
a Rocky Mann, a librarian from EPL who works with Capital City Records. Uh, she's been on the podcast in the past, and we look forward to having her on again, maybe in the future, to uh, remind us and introduce us to some of the great stuff that's on Capital City Records. So it is summer now officially. Uh, it's hot. It's time for road trips and maybe some cool drinks. What Canadian artists and songs would go on your summer playlist? Quincy, you were teeing it up for yourself. Let's start with you for this one. Okay, well, I'll just continue where I left off because uh, I started writing a lot of Edmonton artists and I was like, these are all these artists are on the Riverside's album. <laughs> so I should just rep that. So Riverside's is uh, that's a collection from the Capital City Records artists uh, here at EPL. So Capital City Records being kind of EPL's, I'm going to say digital repository <laughs> for local and, and, and not just local Edmonton artists, but also Alberta artists in general. Um, so that's our digital streaming service, but we're also working on uh, creating a physical CD collection as well, which I know gasp, people still listen to CDs. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and we have a lot of great CDs and some stuff you can't actually get digitally. So make sure you check it out. But I've already mentioned it again, and I've already mentioned it, but I will mention again, Joel Plaskett, his album three, uh, ultimate road trip album. Although, Caroline, you reminded me, Gordon, that is another great road trip album. To me, a road trip album you have to be able to listen to from beginning to end. No shuffle, no skipping, and you should be able to sing along comfortably with pretty much everything on that album. That's a road trip album to me. With the windows down, screaming on the top of your lungs because the wind is... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, uh, that's what you got to have. There are some other... so. Besides road tripping, I think another quintessential uh, summer activity is a backyard barbecue or just chilling on your back deck after mowing your lawn. Um, so I really like to listen to this amazing, amazing musician out of Toronto. His name's Hilario Duran. He's originally from Cuba, um, but he's like a Latin jazz uh, pianist, composer. I think he also plays flute. What can't this man do? He's incredible. Um, but he has a a uh, Juno winning and Grammy nominated, which for a Canadian jazz musician to be Grammy nominated, that is huge. <laughs> so, you know, this guy's the real deal. Um, his album from 2011, From the Heart, is such a fantastic backyard barbecue soundtrack. Again, you can just put it on the background, let it go, and you will just be sipping your cold drink, having a great time, setting up a good vibe for <laughs> nice. yourself. Uh, there's two other groups I've got to mention. I, Bryce, like you, like you, I also had, I just made a master list. I was like, I have to make sure I mention all of these artists at some point. <laughs> um, but one of them is uh, an Edmonton group called the McDades. I don't really know how to describe them, their music style. It's, I, mean, I guess it's kind of like Celtic inspired, very like Kitchen Kaylee vibe. It's an all around jam. They're, they're all family members. Those family groups, they always sound fantastic. There's a there's a thing in the music world that nobody can harmonize like siblings, uh, which I do actually think is pretty true. <laughs> uh, yeah, can, there's a really good episode on Radiolab about, uh, about harmony. Can't remember the specific, but Radiolab has a lot of cool stuff on music. Um, so another group, if we're talking about harmony, I've got to talk about the Good Lovelies. They're a group of three women uh, musicians who, and singers and songwriters, like there's nothing they can't do. I, I can't talk about how much I love these ladies because I would be talking for another three hours. I think I've seen them live more than any other group, even Joel, my, my dear Joel Plaskett, um, who I'm pretty sure thought I might've been stalking him at one point because I saw him like at like three times in one week <laughs> around <laughs> Halifax Dartmouth and it was just totally coincidental. <laughs> But uh, the last time I did notice him, kind of like, mm. <laughs> I think I've seen you before. Just make sure there's no restraining orders or anything. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, Good Lovelies, all of their albums are fantastic summer playlist material. Great vocals, great harmonies, fun lyrics. Uh, even They have a ton of Christmas albums. I'd even recommend those if you're into doing Christmas in July. Why not? Just do it. Um, they sing, 
pretty much anything. They play so many instruments, which I love to see with artists who are just multi-talented across everything. And I can't wait to see them live again. It's like one of the artists I can't wait to to see once we're out of this pandemic. Nice. <laughs> Great. Josh, uh, what do you think should go on a summer playlist? Uh, the album Family Christmas by Sharon Lois and Bram. No, I'm just kidding. But if you do fa- uh, <laughs> do Christmas in July, I do recommend it. So I am going to narrow it down to specific songs because for me, um, I always go to specific songs. And in particular, I like um, picking like songs. Like even though we're not doing parties right now, I always think of when I'm making a summer playlist, thinking about like a song, like a evening party. So for me, um, the songs that I put on um my World by Avril Lavigne from her first album, Let Go. Um, let's see. Oh, um, Fight Club by Lights from the album um, Skin and Earth, as well as um, Little Machine, um, the whole Little Machines album by her. But in particular, I'm big into Muscle Memory because I think it's a nice, smooth song. Um, pretty much all of Emotion Side B, but if you're only going to pick one, um, I would pick um, Body Language by Carly Rae Jepsen. Um, and from Dedicated, um, I would pick uh, This Is What They Say or Fake Mona Lisa by her. Um, and then by Metric, because I have to mention Metric, um, Now or Never Now from um, Art of Doubt. And from Fantasies, I pick Gimme Sympathy. So, you know, just a good selection of those. Um, I think they're nice and smooth. I try to not pick anything too strong except for Fight Club, because I think when you're thinking about summer, um the the weather kind of carries the thing and the music should be kind of in the background so by picking some summer some softer and easier stuff um i think it makes the summer fe- summer parties and playlists feel um much more natural incorporated and as well i mentioned earlier gravity by ralph i think again is going to be our summer song and i highly recommend you put it on your playlist first because you kind of got to build up to the really good stuff Cool. Cool. Bryce, what screams summer for you? Uh, so for me, uh, similar to Josh, uh, I actually picked like five songs that I thought would be great for a summer playlist. So first one, of course, Summer of 69 by Brian Adams. Like That is yeah, also that's... how I'm kicking off my playlist. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's starting off with up. that. Yeah, so exactly. predictable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the word is classic. <laughs> yes, there's yes. the positive and negative one to that: predictable and classic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Second one is from a group. I believe they're out of Regina, maybe. Um, they're definitely from Saskatchewan. It's the Sheepdogs. Um, great band. Um, their song, uh, Feeling Good, is also totally has like a great summer uh, f- uh, feeling to it. Uh, another one, uh, an artist we haven't mentioned yet, a uh, Gordon Lightfoot. <gasps> Uh, he's had a lot of hits. Uh, one of my favorite songs uh, from him is called Sundown. Now, I think that song might actually be about heroin use, but uh, if you don't if you don't dig too much into the lyrics, it's it's a really good song. It's uh, it would be great to have like in the evening, I don't know, on your patio and everything. Uh, the last two, I mentioned this song already, Running Back to Saskatoon by the Guess Who. It totally feels like you're in a band, getting to the next town, you're hitting all these uh, uh, prairie cities and everything great song and uh, the last one uh kim mitchell who is another canadian artist that we have not mentioned yet he had a bunch of hits in the 80s um patio lanterns a uh, great way to wind that uh, summer mix down so those are my five songs how about you caroline see this is how different we are bryce because you went for patio lanterns i went for go for soda for the <laughs> yes. playlist oh so <laughs> Kim Mitchell represented on both of ours. This is why yeah. it's good when we have guests. Otherwise, yeah. we'll just, you know, talk about Same Brian story. Adams for an hour. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the rest rest of mine, uh, I'm, I'm putting uh, Len with Steal My Sunshine, um, Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart, uh, Echo Beach by Martha and the Muffins, uh, which is another song that I heard a ton on the radio because I think it was filling a certain quote. Uh, <laughs> Cut to the Feeling by Carly Rae Jepsen and That Don't Impress Me Much by Shania Twain. Those are the summer vibes I'll be going for. I like it. Josh, your face absolutely lit up when Caroline mentioned Steal My Sunshine by Len. 
Well, I actually, th again, this is one of the things, like, there's, there's artists that you don't think are Canadian, and I never connected that Len was Canadian. I love Steal My Sunshine so much. It's the, the only reason I didn't mention it, because I didn't think they were Canadian, so I was like, okay, I will, I will look for other stuff, but now that I know that, I can feel really good <laughs> about listening to that <laughs> song all night tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bryce, before we get to our roundtable questions, can you let everyone know what we'll be chatting about on our next episode coming out on Friday, July 16th? Caroline, do you ever wake up in the morning feeling shy and lonely and think, gee, I got to go to school or now work, I guess, in our cases? Mm -hmm. But uh, those, of course, are the opening lines of the theme song to the now iconic Degrassi series. On our next episode, we'll be talking about Degrassi, Joey and Caitlin, the Zit Remedy, the Next Generation, and the classic TV movie Schools Out. I might bring up what a jerk Wheel's dad is. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a really fun episode. We're going to keep the Canadian content rolling here on Overdue Finds. We don't have a rule or anything that we have to cover a certain percentage of Canadian content. There's so much good stuff that it just makes sense for us to talk about, right? Absolutely. And speaking of Canadian artists, uh, Schools Out, the the TV movie, uh, features a lot of songs by Gowan. Uh, Moonlight <laughs> Desires uh, being oh, yeah. perhaps the biggest hit. Cosmetics. Uh, tons of, of, of great music that we can explore in that that episode too. So our first roundtable question today, you are casting a Canadian super band with artists from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. You can choose one singer, musician, or band from each decade. Who is going in your super group? We'll start with Josh. All right, so I have picked my artist and I've picked the song that I want them to sing. So from the 1980s, Lover Boy, 1990s, Biff Naked, the 2000s, Feist, and the 2010s, Lights, and I want them to sing Life is a Highway. Nice. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we haven't mentioned Tom Cochran. We have not. So I, well, I had to get him in. Quincy, how about you? Well, a lot of my artists are across decades. So Which I, just, I have to say, I did. I recognized that was going to be a thing, but it was more to avoid me just saying four groups from 1998. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. fair. I, I'm pretty sure that I've represented everybody all these decades fairly. Yeah. Um, I didn't think about a song for them. Oh, I'm so disappointed in myself now. Anyway, here's my group. <laughs> On drums, we got Neil Peart from Rush. How can you not? Vocals, Shania Twain. Again, how can you not? Now, in the rhythm, the rest of the rhythm section, I want Tegan and Sarah filling out guitar and bass. And I want on the keyboards, I want Corey Hart. And then as we were talking through this, I had a moment of inspiration. I said, I love the Good Lovely so much and they harmonize so well. So they're gonna be like my background Greek chorus kind of feel there. And then I'll, I want this all to be produced by Gord Downey from Beyond the Grave. Nice. That's my super group. That's nice. Love it. That would sell a lot. That'd be a very popular album. Right? How about you? Uh, I do not have a song I would like this group to sing, nor did I break it down as perfect as, as Quincy did. But uh, representing the 80s, I've got uh, Brian Adams. Representing the 90s, Alanis Morissette. The 2000s, Josh, you're going to like this. I've got Metric in there. Such a great underrated band, by the way. Truly. And uh, for the 2010s, we got The Weeknd. So I have no idea what this what this group is going to sound like. I just like all of these artists, and I think it would be really cool if they came together for a song. Caroline, how about you? Is Soul Decision in your super band? It's tough. Uh, no, because for the 90s, I went with Prozac. <gasps> and oh, uh, so I I think that that is how the aesthetic of the group is going to be. They are all going to be 
cartoons. Um, uh, I saw Prozac, by the way. They were here at Taste of Edmonton a couple years ago, and they performed a free concert as part of the the entertainment, and it was amazing. It was all people who were basically like my age, plus or minus a couple years, like just having the best time on like a Thursday night in uh, downtown Edmonton. It was it was fantastic. I was almost at that concert, but I got sick from food I was eating and I had to leave before they started playing. And I, I'm so sad. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great show. So Brian Adams, who I guess is, I guess we should just do an episode on him. Um, Prozac, <laughs> Nelly Furtado. I want her to come in and add uh, a little something to it. And then Carly Rae Jepsen. She just seems lovely. So I think that there there's going to be some... Uh, something there that that will catch on in some way uh our second round table question what is the all-time ultimate summer song does not have to be canadian but just the ultimate summer song uh josh what do you think okay so this morning i actually made a playlist of five songs that i think should be in every summer playlist you can put songs in between them but i think this is the order that they should go I, I, I did it scientifically. I have it on my phone here. So I think to start off with, um, we're going to do Catch 22 by Pink. Not a single, but a very good song. I think it starts out with, because it's like, it's it's a song based on, a like, in a plane. So I think that's a great one. Then I got Sax by Fiddler East, which I think brings up the tempo of the, the entire thing. And then an artist that I love, and I would love to talk about more if we can do, like, a general music um, podcast, uh, Cabrona by Jin Wigmore who's a really, really great artist. Um, and then I did Crush by Jennifer Page, but I did the dance mix. And then I ended off with another Canadian artist, which we have not mentioned yet, uh, When the Night Feels My Song by Bedouin Sound Clash. Um, so that is my summer playlist, my, my basic starter. And then you just slot songs in there based on how you're feeling. But that is my, that is my go-to. Right. Quincy, ultimate summer song. All right, so I, I got it down to two. I think I, I did better than Josh. I don't have five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't control myself. Uh, Those are all great songs. <laughs> uh, so to me, there's got there's some criteria to the ultimate summer song. It's got to be something that everyone can sing along to, and it's got to be fun. Not no time for melancholy at this point. Well, there is a there is a time for melancholy, but not this time. So for me, these two songs are "I Want" by the Good Lovelies. It's about a bunch of different summer activities as well. It's really cute. There is clarinet in that one, I'm pretty sure. Who doesn't love it? And then of course, the quintessential end of the night song at a bar or patio, which is Home for a Rest by Spirit of the West. Had to get that one in there. Good choices. Bryce? All right, for me, when we're talking about summer, uh, summer music, or I guess the ultimate summer song, my pick is from 1966 to me this represents everything about the summer it's got summer in the title and it just kind of makes you feel like you're probably what edmonton's gonna feel like when this episode comes out like it's just that hot sticky feeling being in the city so of course i'm talking about summer in the city by the love and spoonful uh one of my all-time favorite intros to like intro to, like beginnings of any movie is die hard with a vengeance so the third die hard it shows all these shots of a hot like new york city during the middle of a heat wave and it's got summer in the city playing in the background it just it's absolutely perfect mm -hmm. caroline how about you wipe out by the safaris and uh oh, it's yeah. just kind of uh a song that is very recognizable has a fun energy you can play it over a montage of you having the summer of your life and is used in uh dirty dancing for that very reason so that's my reasoning on wipeout by the safaris <laughs> I want to mention one Canadian artist that we've not brought up, so we don't get an email saying, <laughs> hey, right. we never mentioned this artist. We do love Justin, emails. We do we love, do love emails. Please send us an email. Send us email. But at email at you don't need to today. about this. No. <laughs> Justin Bieber. We just mentioned him. Okay. <laughs> done. Okay, we're done. That's That's we're done. We're done. <laughs> the podcast. We mentioned him. Yeah. Leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> 
secret. Josh and Quincy, thank you both for joining us today. Is there anything coming up at EPL that you would like people to know about? Uh, so we're always adding, obviously we're always adding new material, both to our physical and digital collections. Um, I will highlight uh I will highlight two resources. So one of them is Mazam, and this is really exciting. So it's a, it's a music learning app for early education, and it's it's a game. <laughs> so we added uh, we added a very similar or a similar style resource uh, called Slice Fractions or Math Time in the fall. It was doing really well, so we started looking at what else was out there, and we heard about Mazam. I'm like, well, we've we've got to add this. Uh, our our kids uh, need to learn music, so why not? Um, so that's going to be added to our collection on July 1st. So when this is released on July 2nd, it should be live. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, I, I did plug it already, but I've got to plug our Capital City Records collection, um, which is, again, uh, local and Alberta-based uh, musicians and artists. So we have this collection online uh, to stream. Uh, you can find that at epl.ca. But then we also, as I mentioned, we are building an in-house collection uh, for uh, when artists do release physical uh, CDs. Great. And Josh, how can people get involved with Summer Starts? Well, by the time this podcast comes out, we are in the heat, literally, of Summer Starts. Uh, if you're learn looking to learn more about Summer Starts, you can go to epl.ca forward slash summer dash starts and learn all about the events that are going on, including all the fun online events. I have heard there are birds on bicycles. And when I learned that, I kind of lost my mind a little bit and a li I got a little bit very excited about it. Um, but you can either go in branch and pick up a calendar and register for Summer Starts um, and pick up a registration uh, booklet. Or you can do all your summer starts online if you don't feel comfortable coming into a branch. So for every six hours that a child reads, uh, they get entered into a draw to win some really fantastic prizes. Uh, meet and greet at the uh, West Edmonton Mall um, for the Penguins. Um, there's a fully stocked art table, um, a Nintendo Switch and protective case, and a scooter and a helmet. Now, if I was participating, I'd want the scooter and the helmet because I love to scoot around town. Um, but if you come into Branch, two things is that if you bring in your reading log for six hours, you get a keychain that you can pick out and bring home, and you can be on the hunt for Octopus Prime. If you go in today when you're hearing this podcast, you'll still have time to enter into the first weekly draw the Hunt Down Octopus Prime. So I'm excited for Summer Starts. It's going to be an amazing year. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, please make sure that you're subscribed so that you automatically get all of our new episodes. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We love getting reviews. And if you like what you hear, tell a friend about the show. You know that one friend of yours who always has hot takes on music and opinions about what you should listen to? Tell them about this episode, and uh, I think they'll enjoy it. Of course, uh, don't forget that we'll have a link to everything that we talked about in today's show notes. Caroline, my apologies to you because you are doing up the list for this episode, and this is probably going to be like our longest list, isn't it? I think I cap out at 100 items, and I've only hit that a couple <laughs> times, so I might need to judiciously uh, use my editing judgment on what makes the list but it's going to have an amazing collection of stuff to it check will. out this is going to be like the ultimate like canadian music list so yeah. uh definitely check that out uh so, but if you want to share your summer playlist uh or tell us maybe what your f favorite canadian musicians are email us at podcast at epl.ca we love getting emails or hit us up on twitter by using the hashtag epl overdue finds Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.